Hello of the internet, my name is Dean, and welcome to this tutorial on using Active Storage in Rails 5.2 to upload files to your Rails application. If you haven't already seen the tutorial on using Active Storage to upload images to your Rails application, I'll leave a couple links for you in the description and maybe in the video so that you can check that out. Okay, so for this one, all I did was I created a new Rails application. I called it uh, Dropbox, and then I changed it into the application. I typed Rails S to start the server, and then I went to localhost port 3000 to make sure that the server was running. And if we scroll down, it tells us that we're running Ruby Rails version 5.2. This is important. Make sure you're running at least 5.2, otherwise the active storage part won't work. So to start off, let's create our uh, scaffold that we're going to be attaching the files to. So we'll call this Rails G scaffold uh, drop because we called it Dropbox. Let's just call the files themselves drops. Uh, each drop will have a title. It gets the type string by default. And then we'll give them a description and we'll call the description or we'll get, assign the description a type of text and we can hit enter. And this is pretty much it for generating the actual scaffold and any migrations associated with the file that we're going to be using. So assuming the Ubuntu shell wants to work the way that it's supposed to, we should see that it generates a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, for now, we can come over to config and routes.rb, and we can say root2, and then we'll say drops index. Wow, this really doesn't want to work. Okay, let's restart our Ubuntu shell. MNTD sites. YouTube, Dropbox, Rails, G, Scaffold, Drop, Title, and Description, Text. Hopefully it works this time. This is a little finicky. Okay, there we go. So now we can come over to App, Assets, Style Sheets, Scaffolds, and we'll delete that. And then we can type Rails DB colon migrate to migrate the database. And then once that's done, we can then start the Rails server. So Rails S. Oops, Rails S. And now hopefully this will take us to the uh, index page of our scaffolds, which it did. So now we can create a new drop. We'll call this first one Hello World. And no more cowbell, please. Click Create Drop. And this works as intended, so we can go back. We can edit, create, update, destroy, whatever, all the good stuff that comes with CRUD. So now how do you add file attachments? Previously you used a gem like Paperclip or Carrier, Carrier Weave, but with 5.2 active storage got added into the Rails stack. And uh, as far as I know, Paperclip was deprecated. I don't know what the fate of the other gems is, but um, we're gonna be using active storage as the tutorial suggests. So for now we'll kill the server and we'll type rails active underscore storage colon install. So this runs the installer for the active storage, which will create a migration and it'll also generate. Um, actually, I think it might only do this. I don't know if it generates the storage.yaml, but the actual tutorial on the rails edge guide says that you need to create the storage file yourself. So maybe that was updated since the tutorial was created. I'm not entirely sure. Let's type rails db colon migrate to migrate the database. And then once that's done, we can come over to our models and our drop.rb model, and we'll change the tab size again. I don't, I'll have to change that by, or change it manually so that it auto updates every time. Um, so we'll say it has one attached, and then uh, we'll call it a file. So we're just naming it file this time. You can name it whatever you want to. Um, maybe it's like specifically presentations because you're doing a PowerPoint app or you're calling it a PDF or whatever. So we can come over to our views, we can come over to our drops and the form, and uh, below the title and above the description, we'll do another div with a class equal to field. And we can close that. We'll give it a label, form.label, and we called it file. And then we'll do form.file field and file. So now if we start the server, <laughs> always important to remember to do that, we can then go to new drop and we should see that there is no server running yet. Okay, so we can give this a title of, I don't know, um, this one worked. 
and let's add in the nginx config that I have here. So this is just a basic text file. We'll give it a description. This config for nginx works. And we'll create the, oh wait, we can't create it yet because we haven't done the controller yet. So if we were to create this right now, the parameter that we're trying to pass, which is the file parameter, hasn't been whitelisted. So we have to come into our controller and scroll down to the drop params where it says params.requireDrop.permit. And at the end, let's just do a comma colon file. So we'll save that, we'll hit create drop. And then you can see up here that the file will be uh, added in with a blob from active storage, assuming everything works. So if we scroll up, we can see update active storage blobs, blah, blah, blah. That's great, but we're not seeing the file yet. So how do we actually see the file? Well, for that, we can go to our uh, views drops show page and below the title, above the description, we'll do a link to at drop dot file. And actually, let's say link to download or for now, let's say view view file at drop dot file. So if we refresh, we have the view file button. So let's click that. And that takes us straight to the actual raw file. So this was a dot text. So it's taking us to that. So how do, how do we handle it if we want to actually download the file? Well, for that, we just change this to download. And then after at drop dot file, we'll just do download colon and then an empty string. We refresh, this changes, and now we're able to download the file. And the reason why that works is if we click on the actual a tag, it just adds in the download attribute right there, which just lets you actually download the file. So if you don't have that and you click on it, it takes you to the raw file. But if you do have that and you click on it, it downloads the file and then you can click on the file and you can see, hey, this is exactly what I uploaded. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If this helped you, please remember to like it. If this didn't help you, remember to dislike it so that other people know not to watch the other seven or so minutes of the tutorial after they click on it. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.